By the mid-1980s, Clarkson University women's basketball coach Brian Chafin had turned around the Golden Knights' fledgling program, one that did not finish with a winning record until its 10th season in 1984-85. In the fall of 1986, the Green and Gold enjoyed an unparalleled influx of talent, which included a prized local recruit of Chafin's, Herman, New York native, Brigetta Aldis. At 5 feet 11, Aldis beautifully meshed the rare talent of ball handling with her preternatural athleticism and size into a matchup nightmare for opponents at the collegiate level. And unlike her career at a small high school, she did not have to carry the offensive load, allowing her passing abilities to shine through with a talented group of teammates surrounding her. Joined by several other standouts, including fellow Clarkson Athletic Hall of Fame members Beth Bacon and Melissa Smith, both selected in 2004, all this led the Golden Knights to new heights during the late 1980s, capped by a run to the NCAA Final Four in 1989. All this showed plenty of promise during her first season, averaging 7.3 points per game, but it wasn't until the 1987-88 season that she and the rest of the Knights truly established themselves as a power in the region. Clarkson produced its first 20-win campaign in 1988, helped considerably by the emergence of Alvis, as the sophomore averaged 11.5 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 3.2 assists per game. Her most significant production came during a mid-season tournament game against Castleton State when she contributed 30 points and 16 rebounds, the former figure being the first 30-point game in program history. In fact, Aldis held that distinction of the only Clarkson player to score 30 points in the game until February of 2001, a stretch of 537 games. An ICAC second team selection her junior year she gained notice during Clarkson's impressive stretch in the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. The Knights won double-digit decisions over St. John Fisher, NYU, and Clark University. And Aldous' performance was rewarded when she was picked as an NCAA East Regional All-Star. With the backcourt graduated after the 89 season, Clarkson relied upon its frontcourt presence more during the 89-90 campaign and Aldis thrived in her role as scorer and distributor of the post, averaging 12 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 4.6 assists per game, earning ICAC honors for the second time. More significantly, she earned special mention status by the American Women's Sports Federation when the group was considering its All-American choices. Late in the 89-90 season, Aldis became just the second member of Clarkson's 1,000-point club, and she still ranks fifth all-time in that category with 1,139 points. Similarly, she became Clarkson's second player to record 600 rebounds and is still 10th on that list. Her 363 assists are fourth for the program, and her 487 field goals made are the fifth most for the Golden Knights. She also finished her career with a 47.4 field goal percentage, one of the top rates ever for the Golden Knights women's basketball team. A three sports standout for Clarkson in the mid-1960s, Joe Skip Demersky was a true all-around student athlete and served as a team leader for three different Golden Knight athletic teams. The Springfield, Massachusetts native was an all-star on the soccer pitch at Snell Field in the fall, was a key factor in Tech's success at Clarkson Arena in the winter, and was a dominant force for the lacrosse program in the spring. Demersky, a transfer from West Point, played three seasons of soccer and acted as team captain under Clarkson Athletic Hall of Fame head coach Jack Hance. A starting halfback, he helped lead the Knights to three winning seasons and a combined 19-11-1 record from 1964 to 1966. Demersky earned ICAC First Team All-Star Honors as a junior in 1965 and played a leading role in the Green and Gold's best season in the 11-year history of the program with a 7-4 record. He was also selected twice to the All-New York State All-Star Team in 1964 and 1965. Demersky was also a leading force for Coach Hans in the spring, starting for the lacrosse team from 1965 to 1967. He started three seasons at midfield, recording six goals and four assists, and was chosen to play in the prestigious North-South lacrosse game in 1967.
During the winter months, Damersky was guided by another legendary Clarkson coach in the Athletic Hall of Fame, Len Siglarski. Damersky skated for the green and gold from 1964 to 66 and was a solid contributor on Siglarski's teams that compiled 56 victories and an impressive 753 winning percentage during that three-year stretch. As a sophomore in his first year of varsity eligibility, he skated in all 25 games, recording five goals and nine assists as Clarkson finished at 18 and seven. Playing in 25 games during the 1965-66 campaign, the 5'11", 185 pound wing helped the Knights skate to a 24 and three overall record, a first place conference mark, and Clarkson's first ECAC tournament title. The Knights, who beat Cornell 6-2 in the league championship game at Boston Arena, moved on to the 1966 NCAA tournament and knocked off Denver 4-3 in the semifinal round before falling to Michigan State in the national championship at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tomerski served as assistant captain in the senior year of 1966-67 and helped Clarkson reach double digits and wins for the seventh consecutive year with a 14-8-1 record. Through 75 games during his hockey career, he tallied 15 goals and 19 assists for 34 points and made a lasting impression on Siglarski. In a letter the head coach wrote to Demersky, Siglarski said, I can truthfully say that no boy I have ever had has given so much to Clarkson as you did. Loyalty, spirit, teamwork, conduct, and sacrifice are but a few things we ask of our athletes. You have given these plus many more. Clarkson's longtime trainer and inaugural Athletic Hall of Fame inductee Pinky Ryan said to Siglarski, we need more Demersky around here to show others what spirit is. The Clarkson University baseball team's field has gone through tremendous transformation over the past 16 years thanks to institutional support and the generous donations from alumni and one man in particular, Barry Fisher. Over the years, Barry has been a loyal benefactor to the university, giving generously to areas throughout campus. However, more recently, he has turned his generosity to athletics, first by joining a group of generous donors and alumni in helping with the expansion of the Denica Fitness Center to being a vital part of the upgrades to the baseball field. He single-handedly provided the funds for the scoreboard in right field that is adorned with his name and more recently helped the program in its efforts to overhaul the infield watering system. Not only has he provided the institution with generous donations, but he has been a loyal supporter and friend of the baseball program. None of this would have been possible had Fisher not excelled in his postgraduate life. A 1954 graduate of Clarkson with a degree in civil engineering, Fisher initially served in the United States Army Corps of Engineers and then joined the Standard Oil Company of California. Shortly thereafter, in 1965, he became the founder and president of Engineering Technology, Inc. Thirteen years later, he founded another company and served as president of the Berry Construction Company, where he built more than 500 greatly needed residential apartments that benefited the low-income residents of the area. Over the years, Fisher has spent plenty of time helping alumni functions and touting the education that Clarkson brought him. He has served as a class reunion chair, made personal calls for the Clarkson Fund office, and was an alumni association volunteer in new student recruitment. In 1994, he was awarded the Golden Knight Award for all of his postgraduate accomplishments and contributions. Entering the fall of 1979, the Clarkson University men's soccer team wasn't sure where it would turn for its goalkeeper after the graduation of its shared starters four months earlier. The outlook that fall said as much. Rookie Val Golovsky will be a candidate for the starting position in the goal. Fortunately for the Knights, he did a little more than fill the void between the posts, missing time in only three games over the next four years and route to becoming Clarkson's all-time leader in wins with 38 and shutouts with 28.
In more than 1,200 minutes of action as a freshman, he recorded 81 saves, a 1.19 goals against, and five shutouts as the Golden Knights claimed second place in the ICAC with a record of 5-1. and one. But it was in 1980 that Golovsky and the Knights truly put themselves on the regional map. That year, Golovsky spent over 1,500 minutes in the net for the green and gold, posting shutouts in 10 of the team's 16 games, still a program record for whitewashes in a single year. Golovsky truly asserted himself in the midseason, posting four straight shutouts to push the team to 8-1, and one, easily the best start in the program's 28-year history at that time. Three more shutouts would follow, ending the regular season for Clarkson, and the Knights earned one of 24 coveted spots in the NCAA tournament, making men's soccer just the second team in school history to gain admittance to the NCAA championships. His production in goal wouldn't slow down. With the loss of some offensive firepower after the 1980 season, Golovsky was leaned upon more heavily the following two years. He recorded seven more shutouts, including six in the first seven games of the season and 111 saves in 1981, gaining ICAC first team and all New York State honors, but he had a truly historic season in his senior year. Golovsky recorded just six shutouts in his senior campaign, but he was stingy throughout the year allowing only 11 goals in over 1,500 minutes, the fewest goals allowed per game, 0.6875 in program history. Adding in overtime play, Golovsky's goals against the average was a minuscule 0.661, and his save percentage was 921. Up until 2016, the goals against the average figure was the best in the program's 60-plus year history, while his save percentage is still the top figure ever at Clarkson. Only once during his senior year did he allow more than a single goal, and the voters in the conference, region, and across the country took notice. He earned ICAC first team and most valuable player honors, gained another All-New York State selection, and was picked as a second team All-American. Golovsky's lifetime totals of 38 wins and 28 shutouts, nine more than any other goalkeeper, are the most ever at Clarkson, while his 0.97 goals against average is second best. He also ranks third all-time at Clarkson in saves with 414 and save percentage at 868. In more than a century of Clarkson athletics, only the hockey program has seen more players earn All-American honors than the Golden Knights men's lacrosse program, a team that first saw action in 1960. 30 players have earned the accolade in the 58 seasons since, with just four picking up United States Intercollegiate Lacrosse Association third-team All-American selections and four repeating any kind of All-American honor. Defenseman Jerry Kieran just happened to do both. At 6 foot 1 and 185 pounds and possessing average speed, Kieran was neither the speedster nor the hulking defenseman to which teams normally gravitate, but his tenacity and the cross intelligence quotient made him the most decorated defender in Clarkson lacrosse history. When he arrived in Potsdam back in the fall of 1988 from Yorktown Heights, New York, the Golden Knights were coming off an ECAC championship and were clearly a team on the rise. Kieran's arrival ensured there would be no fallback. When he left four years later, the team had claimed another ECAC championship and made back-to-back -back appearances in the NCAA Men's Lacrosse Tournament at a time when only eight teams in the nation were chosen to play for the national title. He was the team's top defender in his final three years with the Golden Knights and was routinely tasked with taking on the opposition's top attacker. An exceedingly smart player with excellent field vision, Kieran excelled both on the ball and off the ball, using angles to both deny passes and forcing turnovers as a close defender. In addition to his excellence on the defensive end, Kieran found ways to get involved in offense as well, scoring five goals with three assists in his career. An immediate contributor to Clarkson, Kieran was a three-time All-League player earning ICAC first-team honors in both his sophomore and junior seasons and then gaining all EAA selection in 1992. 
in the latter two seasons, Kieran earned U.S. ILA All-America third team status, becoming the first and remaining the only player in program history to gain the accolade in consecutive seasons. Following the conclusion of the 1992 season, he was chosen to represent Clarkson in the prestigious North South Senior Game, becoming just the ninth Golden Knight to do so. One of just four former Golden Knights to have his number retired in the Raptors at Chile Arena, number 22 Craig Laughlin was an outstanding forward for Clarkson Hockey in the late 1970s. A native of Toronto, he still ranks among the top 13 scorers in the program's 96-year history with 168 points on 65 goals and 103 assists through 127 career games from 1976 to 1980. Laughlin, who missed just two games in his Clarkson career, helped the Knights amass 85 victories and a 662 winning percentage over his four years wearing the green and gold. In his freshman campaign of 1976-77, he skated in 33 of 34 games, scoring 12 goals and adding 13 assists, while the Knights posted a 26-8 overall record and finished a first place 19-4 in the ECAC for head coach Jerry York. A rugged, versatile forward who possessed a fine goal-scoring touch, Laughlin really came into his own as a sophomore. He put up 48 points with 17 goals as Clarkson's third leading scorer, helping the green and gold to a 19-11 record in 1977-78. He showed no signs of slowing down in his junior year, tallying 47 points on 18 goals and 29 assists as Clarkson skated to another 19-win campaign in 1978-79. As a senior in 1979-80, he served as a tri-captain on head coach Bill O'Flaherty's first Clarkson team and helped the Knights to a 21-12-1 overall record. He was the team's second leading scorer with 48 points on 18 goals, including four shorthanded tallies and 30 assists. Laughlin, who earned a bachelor's degree in management, continued to excel on the ice after graduating from Clarkson and enjoyed an impressive eight-year career in the National Hockey League, skating with the Montreal Canadiens, Washington Capitals, Los Angeles Kings, and Toronto Maple Leafs. The 1977 10th round NHL draft choice of Montreal played in 549 career NHL games from 1981 to 1989 recording 341 points on 136 goals and 205 assists. Laughlin enjoyed his best years with Washington, playing parts of six years in the nation's capital. A fan favorite during his playing days, Laughlin has been a popular analyst on the Capitals' television broadcasts since 1990. In 1989, Clarkson honored three of its greats who went on to NHL stardom. Laughlin, Dave Taylor, and Colin Patterson, where their collegiate numbers were retired. Averaging almost two points a game as a forward for the Golden Knights hockey team, Bill Little was a leading contributor to, on legendary head coach Len Seglarski's first teams at Clarkson. Through 60 games from 1958 to 1961, the Cardinal Ontario native amassed 105 career points on 47 goals and 58 assists. Described by Seglarski as a heads-up type of player who has a good shot and can score that important goal, Little made a big impression on the ice right from the start, recording five points in his first varsity game as a Golden Knight. He scored three goals and added two assists in Clarkson's 10-2 win over Providence on December 5, 1958, helping Coach Siglarski post his first of 673 career wins as a college head coach. Skating as a left wing on Clarkson's top line, alongside All-Stars Mel Tomalty and Bob Van Lammers, Little finished as the team's third leading scorer in his first campaign with 18 goals and 16 assists through 19 contests as a sophomore in 1958-59. The 
The 5'10", 160-pound forward was Tech's leading scorer in 1959-60 and again in 60-61. As a junior, he had 15 goals and 23 assists for a career-high 38 points. Little also served as Clarkson captain in his senior year and scored 14 goals and added 19 assists. He was named an All-East All-Star in 1961, helping Clarkson post a 14-9 record. Little was also mentored by another legendary coach during the spring, excelling for the green and gold on the baseball field as a pitcher and shortstop under Clarkson Athletic Hall of Fame coach Hank Hodge. After graduating in 1961 with a bachelor's degree in business administration, Little attended the New York Rangers training camp and was sent to the Los Angeles Blades of the Western Hockey League and on to the Indianapolis Chiefs of the IHL. After retiring from professional hockey in 1963, Little put his Clarkson degree to work and began a highly successful career in the business world, beginning with the Travelers, an insurance agency. He served as president of the Mobile Home Division of America, Inc., and is currently senior vice president of the Thomas Group Realty, LLC, in Gainesville, Florida. Little was also the business manager of the AHL's Toledo Blades. In addition, he helped to start the hockey program at Bowling Green State University in 1965 and served for two years as the Falcons' volunteer coach during the early years of their program. Little's dedication to his alma mater has been exemplary. Along with lettering three years in hockey and playing baseball for the Knights, he was also a member of Sigma Delta and served as Clarkson's Varsity C Club president. He was the recipient of the Arnold H. Barman Award in 1983 served as the university's Alumni Association president during the 1985-86 year, and was also given Clarkson's Gold of the Night Award in 1986. During the mid-1950s, Clarkson College showcased some of the best hockey teams in the nation, amassing 60 victories and an 896 winning percentage from 1954 to 1957. The Golden Knights boasted all-star forwards and exceptional goaltending, but Clarkson's success would not have been possible without the standout play from its defensive core, and anchoring Tech's blue line was Don Seal. An imposing defenseman for the Golden Knights over that three-year span, the 6'2", 195-pound St. John, New Brunswick native skated in 67 career games scoring 29 points with 24 assists. It was his intimidating physical play on the Clarkson blue line, however, where he really made his impact. Considered the Jackie Robinson of college hockey as one of the first black players in U.S. collegiate hockey, Seal was a big, strong, talented athlete who embraced the hard-hitting aspect of the game. In his first year of varsity competition for Clarkson, he played in all 22 games during the 1954-55 campaign, helping the green and gold to an 18-4 record. One of the most renowned seasons in college hockey history happened during 1955-56, when Seal helped Clarkson to a 23-0 mark, the first perfect campaign in the NCAA since 1947. Clarkson capped off the remarkable feat by defeating arch rival St. Lawrence 7-4 in Potsdam. Seal skated in 23 games, scored two goals and 10 points in the undefeated year. His first career goal was the opening score in a 5-2 victory over Boston College on February 17th at Clarkson Arena. As a senior in 1956-57, Seal was at his best in helping lead Tech to a 19-3 record and the program's first ever appearance in the NCAA hockey tournament. Although the Knights lost to Colorado College in the semifinal round at the Broadmoor Ice Palace in Colorado Springs, they came back to defeat Harvard 2-1 in double overtime in the consolation game, giving the green and gold the unofficial title of Eastern Champions. Seal played in all 22 games, recording three goals and ten assists, and earned All-East First Team and All-Tri-State First Team All-Star accolades. Athletic Hall of Fame head coach Bill Harrison said of Seal, Don had 210 pounds on a 6 foot 2 inch frame and he knew how to use it. He could handle himself well, hit, stick handle, feed and jump. He was rarely out of position and quick to rectify a false move. 
Don was the toughest man to get around I had seen in some time. He was best when the going was the roughest. A member of the fraternity Sigma Delta while at Clarkson, SEAL spent nearly three decades in the Canadian military after college and rose to the level of major in the Royal Canadian Air Force before retiring in 1990.